Welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. <laughs> that was actually a screamer uh, from uh, Andrew in uh, De Paul, De, I beg your pardon, in the uh, particular game against uh, Lobito APC in the Kafka Federation Cup uh, uh, group game for Rivers United of uh, Nigeria. They started on a winning note. On, a, on that uh, note, I welcome you proper to the program. And I'm Emmanuel Fashemi, though we'll get to that story. But let's uh, quickly begin uh, with this uh, particular story it concerns cricket our uh, yellow green uh, team right there in namibia where they lost their first game to kenya in the ongoing uh, icc t20 uh, world cup qualifier that will happen next year in west indies and uh, the United States of America, they lost their first game to Kenya by four wickets. And then uh, the second game against a highly rated Tanzania, who are one of uh, uh, the teams that are, they are looking at or pick uh, the ticket of this particular uh, event, uh, um, suffered uh, a three-wicket defeat in the hands of uh, uh, Nigeria. I'm not alone on the show. I've got uh, Isaac Omediji all the way from Niger State joining me via Zoom uh, uh, this lovely uh, Monday uh, on the show. Isaac Omediji, welcome to Three City Sports on Trust TV. And how is Niger State this morning? Okay, uh, we're still expecting Isaac Omidiji to join up, uh, to join us. Up. But like I said, the Yellow Greens of Nigeria cricket team uh, won that match by three wickets. It was a fantastic outing. The game was abandoned uh, at some point because of the heavy damp war, and uh, they, they had to play that game yesterday uh, afternoon right there uh, in Namibia. And it was a very sweet victory. Uh, for Nigeria in that particular uh, uh, game, and uh, today by uh, this afternoon, later on, they will be taking, uh, they will be playing their third uh, uh, game, and we are expecting that they pick their second win of, uh, of second win of the at uh, the ongoing uh, cricket World Cup qualifier. Okay, Isaac, uh, welcome to the show, 360 Sports on Trust TV. Thank you very much, Manu. All right. Uh, our yellow green cricket team uh, got, uh, got, as in, uh, bounced back uh, uh, to winning ways after their first game, they lost to Kenya. And now their second game against Tanzania, it was a three wicket win for the yellow greens of Nigeria. And later on today, they will be playing their third game. But let's quickly talk about this win for the yellow greens. You know, two slots no, are to be paid, uh, two tickets are available to join other qualified teams uh, for the uh, ICC T20 World Cup 2024 that will be happening in U.S. and uh, West Indies. So what, what's your take about our, our performance from the first game and then the second game, probably later on today, the third game? Yes, uh, kudos to the guys because uh, having lost the first game, it was not good for them considering the fact that they just went into that qualifiers having won the African uh Tony tour in Lagos, and they did that convincingly. Now, against a Namibia, I mean, a Kenya team that dominated them from beginning to the end, they had no answers to all the tricks and tactics of the Kenyans in that first game. But good to see them, you know, back against another favorite in Tanzania. So I show you that these guys, the Yellow Greens, have the strength of character to get the results. And that two slot should be one of the things we should be targeting. And if they can win today, uh, it will put them on a right pedestal to get that ticket. I'm okay. still believing in them uh, because they've invested a lot in that team. Yes, they have invested a lot uh, uh, to that team. Uh, he, uh, I, uh, Lukeman is actually doing well, and the team captain are uh, doing well, winning uh, the man of the uh, the cricket man of the match. As you can see on your screen, that picture where you saw uh, the, he was being handed the man of the match uh, plaque. And uh, in the third game, uh, Isaac, I don't know because uh, we started slowly and we picked up the pieces. Now uh, in our third game later on today, what are your uh, expectations? Uh, which areas? Because I, 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 I believe uh, right there we've learned from our first game, the loss to Kenya, and then this, uh, the third game. Uh, what are your expectations in the third game later on uh, today? You see, we are not one of the top favorites, if you have to be sincere with ourselves. I will still see us as an underdog in these qualifiers, and that status to help us to surprise many. And we've already surprised Tanzania. And I think the next opponent will be looking at the fact that if we could beat Tanzania, they should take us serious. And that is good for the game. 
I'm very impressed with what they did. They should just continue to ensure that they are focused because it's very important and they shouldn't be complacent. I believe complacency set in in the first game and they thought, oh, because we just won the African turning them, hey, they are champions, we can do this, we can do that. No, it, it doesn't happen. Everybody wants to qualify because it will help for exposure, it will help for rating, for ranking, and for the pedigree of these players and for the pedigree of Nigeria in cricket. So I expect them to do the same thing against Namibia, which was adequate focus, tactically sound, and they're able to execute all their tactics in the right way. Okay, they should be able to execute all their tactics uh, in the right way. Uh, I would have loved if we can have uh, uh, the points, uh, how Nigeria is standing. Let's see how uh, after their second game, uh, they, they, though they have three points, let's see uh, other teams that have uh, the same number of points. We have Namibia who has six points. We have Kenya second with six points. We have Uganda with four points. And Nigeria is on the fourth position with three points. Uh, Zimbabwe have two points. Rwanda one point and Tanzania no points at all and we'll be taking on the tabletop as that is a uh, namibia later on so i believe uh, nigeria if they can get that they also have uh, six points uh, let's see uh, we wish them well like as i said uh, they've learned and uh, they should just um, uh, keep uh, progressing and uh, proving every uh, critics wrong that they can do it that they can get one of the ticket to the world cup uh, come next year okay let's uh, leave that story still talking about some nigerian uh, uh, story let's look at this a lot happened over the weekend fantastic uh, uh, sports uh, result from all uh, angle when it comes to sports in nigeria and was the weekend packed full of actions in all of the sports uh, uh, now we'll talk about the volleyball uh, we know that uh, the Nigerian Volleyball League has done the going and uh, the weekend was the climax of every event and two clubs <laughs> uh, for the male and female uh, won uh, the, the league title for 2023 of uh, Volleyball Club and CNS Spikers, that is the uh, uh, chief of Nava staff team, CNS as they are called Spikers, finished off uh, as champions uh, for the offer uh, VC and CNS Spikers. Both teams defeated NSED team, uh, male and female team in the final to win the 2023 Nigerian Volleyball Premier League title. Isaac, for uh, of a VC, fantastic result. This is a team, uh, though I, I never expected them to win the, uh, the, the league title this, uh, this year, but they've done it in a very fashionable style, uh, winning that uh, particular, uh, becoming champions. And for the CNS Spikers, I think uh, all our military, um, all our military uh, uh, parastatas and non-military, they are doing well when it comes to sports. And both teams played NSCDC in the final games to become uh, champions, and they beat the male and female team, Isaac. Let me use it that way, of the two finals, because uh, they lost both male and female in the finals. It will be very painful to them, but kudos to the fact that the people qualify for the finals. It's not easy. And for Ofa VC, that is a volleyball uh, club in Ofa. They did very well. Just as I said, nobody gave them a chance. They came in, they came in, they saw, and they conquered. And it's good for them, and they'll be representing Nigeria subsequently. And looking at these CNS, I'm more interested in that, in that lady uh, basketball I mean, volleyball team. Look at where they came from. Look at how they have continued to grow. And look at the, you know, you mentioned about the sporting abilities of our military and paramilitary groups. It has been on record for years that our military and paramilitary groups don't take sports for a ride. They invest a lot in it. They motivate their staff and their members to participate in it. And they're getting results. So for the chief of our staff ladies, they have been, the speakers, they did very well. And I'm very impressed pressed by them and i hope that they will be able to sustain this and come next year this will be a more you know uh how will i put it to, to be more rewarding for the winners to see more sponsors coming in this will encourage them and will sustain the interest that these various paramilitary and military groups have invested in uh these sporting events 
Yes, of course, uh, they not usually invest in sporting events. Uh, you know, we have all of the military teams playing uh, in the volleyball, even in the basketball. We have them, the paramilitaries. They know what sport is all about. I think uh, all the federations in Nigeria should emulate uh, what uh, uh, the military and paramilitary are doing for their sportsmen and women. Okay, let's leave that story still talking about Nigerian sports. Uh, this one happened in the city of Portakot, uh, uh, the pride of the country where the MBB, uh, MBBF Final Four uh, took place. And we have a champion, River Supers, winning the MBBF League title for the fifth time. They were previously four times champion, and they did that in a very uh, smart manner against uh, the customs and not that paramilitary body. They have their team in the final. They beat uh, Rivers uh, Hoopers, defeated customs in the final, 75 to 55 points to leave the MBBF uh, 2023 league title for Rivers Hoopers, five times uh, champion, winning their fifth league title right there in their own, uh, uh, in their own court in, uh, in the city of Portacourt. Yes, it, 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 the writing has been on the wall. If you look at where Rivers Hoopers were coming from, uh, even from the championship in Lagos, coming down to Portaco for the uh, top four, uh, now they defeated Custom, another paramilitary organization, uh, for the fifth time they are champions. The last time they won it was in 2021. And in 2011 and 2012, they won it consecutively. You know, so Rivers Hoopers have been there. Uh, they've been a solid basketball uh, team. And they've invested in it very well. And one good thing, again, is you need to see the crowd that graced the finals in Port Harcourt. Uh, that shows you that these games are also loved by Nigerians. And if they have the opportunity, they will come and participate in by watching and cheering up their teams. So it was a top four that was organized well by River State. It was a top-notch organization. And River Hoopers crowned it up for the state government by emerging champions, deservedly champion. Because look at the gap, 77, 57. That, that's a huge gap. That is a very huge uh, uh, gap. Now, let's look beyond them becoming champions for 2023. Now, they've qualified to represent Nigeria in the ball, that is Basketball League Africa. Do you think uh, River Supers have what it takes? Because the last uh, uh, Nigerian champions that went there were Quara Falcons. They did not win any game till they bar out of the uh, Atlantic uh, Conference uh, right there uh, in Monastery in Tunisia. That was where it took place. Now, River Supers will be representing Nigeria. Do you think uh, they have what it takes? They were there in 2019. Um, now, so far, so good uh, from what we've seen in the final, from what we've seen River Super did from the beginning of the league to the uh, final day by and then winning it. They have that pedigree to compete with. You know, when it comes to basketball, you don't take uh, Egypt away, uh, Goliath team and the rest and the likes. Now, Mozambican teams, uh, do you think uh, River Supers will go far in this, uh, by, though it will happen next year? Do you think they will do better than Quara Falcons? They will do better than Quara Falcons, but going far is where I'm worried because uh, we've seen other established club sites on the continent, uh, in Egypt, as I mentioned. Senegal, Angola, even Tunisia, and Morocco. These are countries that have established club sites playing basketball who have exposed themselves even to even to international, you know, fixtures. How many Islam fixtures has uh, Liberal Supers played in? If not for the last time that they qualified for the Basketball African League, when last did they play an African opponent? Did they, will you see them testing their might against other clubs on the continent? You know, that is part of what will give them confidence to say, okay, yes, we can go far. I, I see them performing better than uh, Quara Falcons because I reach them high. But going far in the tournament uh, will be difficult. But it's still between now uh, and 2024 and uh, when the tournament will commence. Let's see if uh, the right things are done by injecting the right experience and exposure in the team and motivation, taking them probably on the camp outside the, co outside the country and place some very good African club side. We need this to get them ready. If it's just... By playing Nigerian club said, I would think we are ready. Uh, we are only joking. Okay, we are only joking. Congratulations to uh, the volleyball champions and also that is of our VC and then uh, um, CNS Spikers. And congratulations to uh, the River Supers team for winning the MBBF League 2023 uh, title. Congratulations to all of these teams. They did so well over the weekend. Like I said, action-packed weekend. And also to our cricket team, 
for doing a marvelous job uh, against Tanzania by winning that game three wickets. Later on today, they were playing their third game. We wish them well. Okay, let's leave that story now and talk about the run leather game. They say it is the mother or the father of all sports, <laughs> as people as they say. Now let's look at let's start from uh, the MPFL. That is the Nigerian Premier Football League action weekend. Also match day ten. Fantastic results. I think, uh, uh, though, I, I didn't like um, how we went back to the regular season uh, with 20 teams uh, standing. Uh, but right now, I think I'm loving what I'm seeing in the Nigerian Premier Football League. In March the 10th, there were actions uh, uh, in all of the venues and there were solid results, uh, surprising results. Uh, you might say we don't have an away win, but good results. For Doma United, they went to Remo in Ikene and they they had to just uh, be resolute at the back, and it ended on a goalless uh, affair. Or Basuge again, springing up another good performances right there at the Sanya Bacha Stadium, Kofemata, as it's called, by also uh, man of the match uh, performances for Basuge, that is a Bendel Insurance uh, goalkeeper. It also ended on a goalless drop. But let's uh, look at this. Lobby stars are back to the top of the table. Isaac. I think Lobby Stars are proving uh, that yes, uh, what they did last season was not a fluke by qualifying for the Super Six. Now, again, after that win in March the 10th, they are back to the top of the table, displacing Doma United from uh, the first position. Uh, wh what's going on for, <laughs> for Lobby Stars? What is the turn? What is the game changer for Lobby Stars of Mark Hody? You know, when you said Lobby Stars displacing Doma United from the top of the table, it, it sounds strange because nobody at the beginning of the season will have seen these two clubs <laughs> pitching each other, taking each other's position first, second, on the top of the table. But these are two teams that are doing very well now. And Lobby Stars even beat my imagination. And you know why? Now, before the season commences, just some few weeks before the season commences, the manager they signed was asked to leave. <laughs> and a new coach was brought in. And I was wondering... A coach has already prepared a team for the season, and you're bringing in a new coach. Now, that I've shown that this team is solid, the foundation is good, and they are getting their results. But do my United to have gone to Ikene and get a draw? It's a massive result. To me, it's even like a three-pointer. And kudos to the goalkeeper of uh, my United, who have consistently, I think he has clapped eight clean sheets. Yes, eight clean sheets this yeah. season. I think he's the goalkeeper with the highest clean sheets in the league. After about Obasuge or Bender Insurance, you give it to the goalkeeper of Doma United. Wonderful. And um, Amas, again, over the weekend, you know, got a good performance for himself and for his team. And it was the reason why Kano Pillars couldn't get the victory over Bender Insurance in Kano. He even saved the penalty from the veteran himself, Rabi Ali. So we are seeing beautiful things in the league, beautiful things in the league. And I'm very impressed. And again, I don't know whether you saw the Rangers and the way they dressed to the rental debut against Abia Warriors. Perfect and wonderful branding. Perfect and wonderful branding. Talking about Rangers, uh, the uh, I think uh, the code uh, actually Fidelis Lechuku complained about the pitch, and I saw I saw some uh, images of that pitch. Well, I, I don't know why the MPFL organizers have to um, uh, give a go ahead for that pitch. A lot of works need to be done. Uh, sometimes we might complain that the pitch don't play football, but uh, when you when your players are not used to certain pitch. It's always difficult for them, and that was why we saw what happened. Though for Abia Warriors, their their home form continue. Ten games now, they they they've not lost any of those ten games at home, and they continue that dominance against uh, Rangers International over the weekend in March the 10th. It was one nil against uh, Enugu Rangers in the Oriental Derby, and fantastic result. Bendel Insurance going away to uh, Sanya Bacha Stadium in Kano to play a goalless draw. Let's quickly have the result on the screen. Let's see the match. Then match the 10 results and let's see how other teams uh, uh, fared over the weekend. Like I said, Doma United played uh, Doma United played a goalless draw with uh, um, Remo Stars in Ikene. It was a goalless affair. And Rangers International losing one nil and Bendel Insurance playing uh, goalless. Okay, let's uh, have the table before we can have the result. Let's look at the table. Let's just see how teams are standing quickly and run over it. Okay, we have Lobby Stars who are back to the top of the table with 20 points uh, after March the 10th. We have Doma United second with 18 points. We have Shooting Stars of Abaddon uh, winning their game also uh, on third position with 17 points. We have 
Ramos Stars, who played a draw with Doma United on the fourth position after nine games. They've played lesser game with 16 points. Anybody having this, another surprising uh, team for me is anybody who has now uh, find themselves in the fifth position after nine games, having 16 points. Enugu Rangers uh, played a uh, loss to Abia Warriors 1 nil. Uh, it was 1 uh, nil, and they have 15 points. At the sixth position, Abia Weros following them with minus two goal difference, 50 points also. Ben Dell who played draw with Canopolas, is on the eighth position with 14 points. We have Kara United on the ninth position, uh, who has uh, uh, 13 points, and Plato United is on the tenth position with 13 points, though they didn't play their game because they were supposed to play against Rivers United, who had the continental engagement. Let's have the flip side. Of the table, let's look at the flip side of the table. We have Sunshine Stars uh, with 13 points. Castina United is on the 12th position with 13 points. Kano Pillars is on the 13th position with 13 points and minus three. Go different sport in Lagos, fantastic team, though they are on the 14th position right now with 12 points after 10 games. Rivers United uh, have 12 points on the 15th position, did not play over the weekend. Gombe United is on the 16th position with 12 points, and Niger Tornado 17 points, 17 position with 11 points, and Aqua United is on the uh, 18th position with 10 points. Bayesa United is on the ninth, uh, 19th position with 9 points. And Hardline FC continue to remain where they are with just uh, uh, 6 uh, points. Okay, that is uh, uh, the league table for the Nigerian uh, Premier uh, Football League. Okay, let's run over the result quickly. We have Castina United playing 1-1 with Bayesa United. Lobby Stars beat Shooting Stars 2-1. Quarry United 2, Gombe United nil. Niger Tornadoes 1, Aqua United nil. Sunshine Stars 1, Sporting Lagos nil. And Abia Warriors pipped Rangers International 1 nil. Canopilas goalers against Bendel Ishiran. Remo Stars, the same result. Goalers against Doma United. And Hardland FC in another rented derby beat uh, uh, lost to Enyba International FC uh, of about one nil. That goal was scored in the second half of that game. Fantastic. Isaac, quickly, just regard to Enyba's position now. They are fifth on the table. Fantastic one. They found themselves, they were at the relegation zone, but now they shoot to uh, the fifth position on the Nigerian Premier League table after they started slowly because of continental engagement. And you know, a lot has not really been going on uh, well for uh, Enyba International of Aba. Yes, uh, because of continental engagement, there were so many games that they didn't play. So they have deficits, and for that reason, they will find themselves uh, towards the bottom of the league. Now they're coming up. They still have one more game at hand, and if they win that game, they will be one point short of Lobby Stars. So uh, that is tough of champions, and they went away to Atlanta and get a 1-0 victory. And that was Kennedy Boboye's first game as manager of Atlanta, and it didn't go well for him, but for him, it went well for them. And let's see... Uh, that by the time they get all their games equally played, uh, we we'll know who and who will be champions or those who will qualify for the Continental Showpiece again next season. Okay, those who qualify for the Continental Showpiece, uh, this is okay. Let's take a look at this story. We started with it. Uh, we just saw a highlight of a one uh, of the goals that was scored right there at uh, Uyo. Uh, that is uh, Rivers United, the trash. APC Lobito 3-0. They started their Calf Confederations Cup uh, uh, game on a very solid note by winning that particular uh, counter against uh, APC uh, Lobito. We saw one of the goal. It was a screamer from outside uh, the 18-yard box from 35 yards out. That goal just uh, went straight in. That was that is a, a kind of a European goal, and that is kind of a continental goal we want to be seen. Uh, but for Rivers United, congratulations to them. They didn't play over the weekend. You can see that goal again. Uh, that was a rocket bullet uh, coming in from uh, uh, the legs of uh, uh, Ede, as he is called, uh, giving Rivers United the second goal of that game. And it was a fantastic one. 3 nil on the evening for uh, Rivers uh, United. Isaac, I will not allow you to react to this story uh, because uh, I, I know if you want to talk about Rivers United now, you might just take all of the time. But good one. They started on a very good note. Uh, let's see how they fare in the result. They have uh, other teams, a Ghanaian team, the Dreams FC, who are also talking tough ahead of their meeting against uh, Rivers United in March Day 2. Uh, and Rivers United will be away in March Day 2 of the CAF uh, Confederations Cup. They are our only uh, team re uh, remaining in the continent. Okay, let's quickly leave that story and go straight to La Liga, where Sadiq Umar is back 
with a screamer also in that game uh, for Real Sociedad against Sevilla. And after that game, he got a gift for the legendary Sergio Ramos, uh, giving him a jersey, a national team jersey. For Sadikuma, uh, Isaac Omidiji, this guy has struggled uh, since coming back from injury. One season out, one year plus some months, he didn't play football. But now he's back, gradually, gradually coming back where, uh, where he used to be. You know, he was signed from Almeria and he was expected to come and bang in goals. Unfortunately, uh, at the beginning of the season, last season, he got a very bad injury that took him out for uh, a whole season and some months, as you said. And now he's back and he has also not found the net. Even since he came back, it has been very difficult for him to be consistently scoring goals. And just uh, over the weekend, he scored a screamer, unlike Sadiq Umar. Yes, I would say it's, it's unlike Sadiq Umar to have scored that kind of wonderful goal from outside the ATL box. Uh, it would be good for his confidence because he mm -hmm. definitely needed that. Remember, he's one of the players that have not oh, convinced I so many Nigerians why he's invited to Super Eagles. But uh, on the, club, uh, the uh, at his club well, side, at uh, the club level, have, he's uh, very we'll good. Leave you with uh, the table of La Liga, and that is where we'll leave it on. Uh, uh, that is where we'll leave it on 360 Sports from Trust TV. Isaac Omidiji, thanks uh, for joining me on the show, and that is uh, the size of the package. Uh, thanks for watching uh, this uh, lovely morning. I am Emmanuel Fashimi.